everyone and welcome to another bookmas video. Yesterday I talked about all of my favourite books of 2020, all the books I gave 5 stars to, what I would call the best books. Um, so today we're doing the other side and we're talking about all of the books I DNF'd and gave 1 stars to, or the ones that I thought of as the worst books. For my one year booktube anniversary I did post a video where I put my 5 best and 5 worst in the same video, so if you are interested in working out which ones of these I would actually officially count as the worst you will have to go and watch that because this is just about kind of like showcasing which ones I didn't enjoy rather than picking which one I didn't enjoy the most out of those um but yeah there aren't as many thankfully we had 12 DNFs and we had 13 one stars um our best books list was 48 so we read like just under half of our five stars so we're, we're reading better books than worse books, which is good. Um, but also I still need to learn how to DNF more because most of the one stars were ones that I genuinely struggled to get through and could have just stopped earlier. Um, so that is kind of one of my tasks for 2021 to learn how to DNF faster. Um, so I'm going to talk about the DNFs first. Um, just to let you know a little bit about where I stopped in each one, why I didn't finish them, and then I'll move on to the one stars. So one of the books I DNF'd this year was How We Met by Katie Reagan. Um, I'd been really looking forward to this one. It is a adult contemporary story about a group of friends after the death of one of them. Um, I think there's five friends. Oh, there's, there's six friends. Mia, Fraser, Anna, Norm and Melody, um, and Liv. And Liv dies, and it's all about how they move on when she leaves them. I will admit that I was enjoying the beginning of this. We read quite a few chapters but it was going in a direction that I didn't like and I could see it coming from a mile away and I checked the end just to see if that was how it finished and it was so I decided to put this to one side um, but I did really like the writing style and I thought that like the, the humour throughout it, like the humour in the face of the grieving was very realistic um this is one that some people will probably enjoy the next book that i dnf'd was black swan rising by lee carroll um unfortunately this one was just a bit too slow for me um we read the first chapter and although i was interested in the story and i have considered picking it up again since it just dragged a lot and i've read books that do similar things but better um it's kind of steampunky um that it's an urban fantasy it's vampires, alchemists and fairies in New York apparently but at the point that I'd read up to there wasn't really any of those aspects in there which is probably why it was dragging a bit um, but yeah it's part of a trilogy as well and I've only got the second one so I thought I'll call it quits before I get too far in. Another book that I DNF this year was Dead Beautiful by Yvonne Woon. This is a YA fantasy romance, um, urban fantasy paranormal romance i don't know what they're called anymore <laughs> i'll start that again because it's going well this is a way of paranormal romance about a girl whose parents die and she gets sent away to a boarding school where she meets a guy and he's really alluring and it's very twilight-esque um i managed to get halfway through this one and i was really mad at myself for giving up on it because i'd read over 200 pages um part of me is like can I just finish this before the end of the year just so it's on my Goodreads list but I wasn't enjoying it and again it's one of those ones where I skip forward to the end to see if it was going where I thought it was and it was and I didn't I don't like that trope so I've avoided it um this is also the first book in a trilogy if it'd been a standalone I probably would have just pushed through but I'm not interested in carrying on with the series so there's no point in finishing the first book a set of three books that we dnf'd in 2020 was the rules of people wealth and management by Richard Templar um, these are really, really dusty because we've been, we've had them in like a bag ready to unhaul them and the charity shops aren't taking many donations at the moment. So we have been holding on to them for a little while, but these are collections of rules that you should follow to be better with people, uh, to, to get rich and to be a better manager. And I just really don't like Richard Templar. He basically, he's very classist, um, says a lot about like oh well if you can't afford to buy a good suit for a job interview then you don't deserve that job um you should be like presenting yourself the way that you want to live so like be what you aspire to be and then your aspirations will come true kind of thing but like that's that's pretty bullshit 
Um, I've read some of his other books before and I haven't enjoyed them, but Sean had these and was interested in them. So I literally like went through, um, we read like the rules and we read some of the bits, um, if they were rules that interested Sean, but we both agreed he's a bit, he seems a bit kind of pompous and it, it's not very realistic for like your average Joe to follow those rules. So we just put them down because I was getting way too angry. <laughs> Another book that we DNF'd was Monster by CJ Skews. Uh, this is a YA horror uh, about a girl whose brother disappears over Christmas. Uh, there's a blizzard. They're stuck in the school. Um, it sounded like it was going to be amazing. Loved CJ Skews's Sweet Pea. Did not like CJ Skews's In Bloom. And the beginning of this one was quite slut shamey and I am not pro that. So I, I couldn't. Another book that we DNF'd was Candle by Pam Bachores. This is a book I probably would have absolutely loved 10 years ago. Um, it's a dystopian about people who can only tell the truth or something. Oh, there are in brainwashing messages embedded in music that plays all over town, but this boy has found a way to like do like counter the messages, but he's the leader's son. So it's like about rebelling against your family, um, but also like, he's just obsessed with this girl that he meets like he meets on the street and then he's like automatically like looking at her boobs and like trying to guess what like cup size she is bit creepy so that's the kind of book i would have appreciated if it had been a bit less kind of stereotypical boy um but i'm sure that some people love that one like absolutely adore the cover like that is such a stark and gripping cover like that you can't see that cover and not pick this book up the next book that i dnf'd was dearly departed by leah habel this is another book that we got halfway through um this is a futuristic book in which the world has kind of ended as we know it but the people in the future decided to go back to like the victorian times so you're writing with like you're writing on a tablet but you're like using a quill and you're wearing like your petticoats and your big dresses and your corsets and stuff and it's kind of interesting but also i just think like out of all the eras why would you go back to the victorian um and it's a zombie romance so the guy is a zombie but he's still like functioning and they're like falling in love and i don't know again i probably would have loved this if i'd read it 10 years ago and i tried to read it 10 years ago and i couldn't get past the first chapter so maybe that proves i wouldn't have loved it 10 years ago but I'm going to call it quits on that one as well. And another book that we DNF this year was Starcross by Josephine Angelini. Uh, tried the first chapter, couldn't get on with it. It's, there's like a new family in town and they're like really interesting and they're really like beautiful and everybody's paying attention to them and it's pretty much Twilight. But they're like gods or something? I don't remember. Um, oh yeah, they're gods. Um, she's destined to hate the guy. They're Starcross lovers. Um, she doesn't hate him because she's drawn to him. Um, I don't know. The covers are beautiful. I want to love this series because the covers are beautiful. But I wasn't a huge fan of the first chapter. So I put it down. Another book that I DNF'd this year was The Sham by Ellen Allen. This is like the only NetGalley book I have ever DNF'd. And it was because there was this horrible scene at the beginning where these um, girls are bullying this autistic child. And they're like trying to get him to like bite the head off a bird. And it's it's horrendous it is disgusting it's uncomfortable it's not necessary um and as someone who's read like Stephen King like I've read it this year and I didn't find that uncomfortable at all despite some of the stuff that goes on in there and that's like an adult book featuring children where the children are doing things that they probably shouldn't be and that didn't make me uncomfortable at all but the fact that this is YA and it was one of the only books where I've ever felt physically sick while reading it I could not believe it had been published I genuinely was just distraught um so this one got DNF'd <laughs> and this was like the first DNF of the year and it started off what is a pretty strong selection the last book I DNF this year was All the Rage by Darcy Lockman. This is a non-fiction book about one woman's struggle with like feminism and parenthood. I thought I was going to enjoy it because I like books about feminism and I like books about parenthood. But it's coming from a very privileged background in that she lives in like the Upper East Side I think. And she's really unhappy about the fact that her partner's gone back to work and she's also gone back to work and he's not supporting her enough. And I just think like read the room. There are people really really struggling and there are people who are going through some horrible things over the last few years and there are people who are grateful just to be able to feed their children and themselves and i just didn't want to read 
I didn't want to read that. It annoyed me too much. I think I read the prologue and half of the first chapter and I was just so annoyed that I just returned it to the library instantly. So now let's talk about all of the one stars that I read in 2020. It's a short list. Um, I'm going to keep it brief. First up, The Dolls by James Patterson. First James Patterson book we've ever read. Hopefully the last. Then we have The Ruining by Anna Collamore. This is a book which is completely ripping off The Yellow Wallpaper by Charlotte Perkins Gilman and is so aware of the fact that it's a rip-off that the character then reads The Yellow Wallpaper and is like, why does this seem like it's my life? Like, because your author read The Yellow Wallpaper, decided to rip off The Yellow Wallpaper and you are becoming aware of it for some reason. Um, it's, I guess it's trying to break the fourth wall to make it feel like it's actually really happening because how could it be like a story if it's actually a story? Well, because it's a rip-off. One star. But it did mean that we did read The Yellow Wallpaper this year, and we both loved it. I've read The Yellow Wallpaper three times now, and it's been five stars every time, so that was a plus of reading that one. That it made me reread one, an old favourite. We also had The Museum of Heartbreak by Meg Leder. I'm going to spoil this one, um, but then the story spoils itself within the first few pages anyway, so if you do pick this one up, it won't be a surprise. Um, this is about a girl who breaks up with her boyfriend, Keats, and she makes a museum about her heartbreak. Um, but the first thing that she puts in the museum is something given to her by her friend Frame. And then the next thing she puts in the museum is something given her by her friend Frame. And it quickly becomes apparent that this girl is absolutely obsessed with her best friend and that the Museum of Heartbreak is really just a ploy to kind of get him to like her back. Um, and it's... It's not good. It's not what I thought it was going to be at all. I thought it was going to be like an empowering story about a girl moving on from a breakup. Um, it was not that, but it does have a beautiful cover, and I think that kind of made it even worse. I think if it hadn't had a beautiful cover, it probably would have been a two star, but I was just expecting such great things from this one that it was a one star, and I'm unholding it. The next one star that I read was Whistle in the Dark by Emma Healy. This is about a mother whose daughter goes missing. She won't tell the mum what happened. The mum's like, what happened when you were gone? And she's like, nothing. And the mum thinks she's hiding things from her, but really, like, nothing happened. Um, it's a, kind of about psychological things, it's about the way that your mind can play tricks on you when bad things happen. I thought it was going to be more of like an actual thriller, like about this kidnapping, this disappearance of the daughter. Um, it's not, and it's, it's a domestic thriller, but the thrilling aspects are very, very gentle. Um, I'd say if you were expecting that going into this one, you'd probably really enjoy it, but I was expecting it to be a thriller, and I thought, especially from the cover as well, like it looks like it's quite dark, quite gritty, and it's not, um, so my expectations are wrong on that one, and I think that's why it was a one star. The next book that I gave one star in 2020 was The Lost Letters of William Wolfe by Helen Cullen. I thought this was going to be a great story about a guy who has, like, been lonely all his life, and he works in this Lost Letters depot, and he, as somebody starts writing anonymous love letters, and he decides to track down who's writing them because he thinks they might be his soulmate. But it's not that cute, because he's actually trying to cheat on his wife with the writer of the letters. Um, he's completely neglecting her and their relationship, he's ignoring her, um, all in the quest to find this anonymous lady who doesn't even know that he's reading her letters because she thinks she's just like sending them into the void. Uh, a little bit creepy. Uh, Sean also hated this one so it wasn't just me, um, but I think this was another one that the concept was so great and my expectations were so high and that was why I didn't end up enjoying it. The next book on the list is The Fire Child by S.K. Tremaine. This actually was a thriller, which is something because it was what I was expecting. However, it's completely batshit is probably the best way to describe it. You're following a lady who has just married this guy. He's like, he's come from like coal mine money. Um, so he's not made of money anymore. They've still got the massive mansion from when they were coal mining. Um, but he's like only able to use like one wing of it, it's all like decrepit and broken down, it's quite creepy setting. Um, there's a lot more to him than meets the eye, but there's also a lot more to the girl that meets the eye. Um, and then there's this really ridiculous twist that is just so stupid that I nearly threw my Kindle across the room. Uh, it, it's honestly so silly and it makes no sense and it's kind of drizzled through but you think like, oh there's no way they're going towards that because that would just be ridiculous and it is that. Um, but the thing that really put the final nail in the coffin for me for this one was the fact that there's lots of negative uses of autism. Um, so there's places where, like, the landscape is described as autistic, like the guy's son. Um, it, there's a lot of kind of negative connotations of autism thrown in there. Um, that is not okay with me. I would never rate a book that did that more than one star. So this one, in this case, the trash took itself out. 
The next book on this list is The Memory Game by Sharon Sun. A boy gets killed in a hit and run accident and he decides, as a ghost, he, that he doesn't want to solve his murder because he couldn't care less about the fact that he's dead. Instead, he's going to creepily haunt the nerdy girl who he always used to bully until she falls in love with him. Wow, that's priorities. Someone's hit and killed me with their car. I can't wait to fall in love with that nerdy girl I've always hated. What the fuck? The next book on this list was Southern Perfection by Katie Peeler and I hate giving this one one star because I think the heart of the story is in the right place, it's just the way that it is written, like the structure of the writing and the writing itself was where my problem lied in this one. Um, so you've got a girl who is like the prettiest girl in school, she's loved by everyone, like she's a proper southern belle um, and her granddad is dying um, but she's kind of not showing that side of it to anyone so there's a lot of like the contradiction between like the face she's putting on in public and the way that she's feeling at home um new guy moves to town they fall in love it's very romantic but it's a case that if this one had been adapted to tv or film i probably would have loved it i think watching this story play out would be very powerful and i think it would have a much greater impact um reading it i think it was either independently published or it was self-published um like an, an indie small press or, or self-pubbed um but it shows um it needs a lot of editing it needs a lot of work on basic grammar and sentence structure and things like that and it was just too clunky for me to see past that to the story but i do still have like fond thoughts of this one so maybe i was a little harsh giving it a one star i don't know the next book on this list is white fragility by robin d'angelo this is a white woman who is talking about racism and talking to white people about the way that they feel about racism um and basically her entire argument is like if somebody calls you a racist and you don't agree with them then that means you are a racist um if you can't own the fact that you have racist thoughts and feelings basically all the time even if you don't mean to then you're a racist um and like the whole argument is that you can't contradict her because if you contradict her then you're a racist but some of the things that she says in this book that she has felt and that she has done in her life are horrendously racist and the fact that white people are like seeing her as like the sion to look up to of like how to deal with race and other races and how to work like in the workplace with them like she goes touring around the country doing like um oh what's it called like workshops uh on how to get racism out of your workplace um but some of the ways that she talks about her workshops you just think oh my god like woman like just please just take a seat and let someone else do that job um, because there's instances where she is saying that she's been doing a workshop with an, another person like a person of colour and all the white people have just listened to her and have ignored the person of colour because she's like the one that they've come for and I'm like oh no that's not that's not cool um, I've there are more eloquent reviews for this one out there I will link the one that I linked when I wrapped this one up because it's a really really good review and it has lots of like quotes from the book so that you can see how it's handled um but not well would be the way I would describe the handling of it I'm not very eloquent I'm trying the next book on this list is we are watching by M Stephen Stewart uh this is a book that like I didn't like that much that I've basically erased it from my mind and I can't really remember why I didn't like it that much uh so there's a guy his dad's a spaceman um he goes up into space to do astronauty things and he dies and the boy is grieving him and then I don't I honestly I was struggling to make sense of it when I was reading it trying to remember it four months later is not happening um it's the first thing in a series I will not be carrying on with the series. I think that this is another case where it's either self-pubbed or in like a small, small publisher and it needs a hell of a lot more work. Um, so one of the things that really got me about this one was the fact that the main character is called Henry. So he's Henry Malone. You also get him, you, he's called Trainee Malone. He's called Hank. But this is like before you're properly introduced to him. This is within the first few pages. You've got Hank, Trainee, Malone and Henry. And you begin thinking like, oh, are these like three different characters? Because it's not made very obvious that it's like nicknames and things. Um, and it's the same with two or three different characters. They're handled in the same way. Um, and it just, it just did my nut in really. I struggled with this one from page one. I knew I needed to DNF it at 10% and then for some reason I carried on and it took me like three weeks and I hated the whole time. So I will learn to DNF properly next year, hopefully. 
decided to get some cheese to give me the energy to get through these last few books because this is really draining me. I thought this was going to be a fun video, like us oh, spilling tea, like showing receipts, but it's just like, wow, I read some shit books this year. Why did I carry on reading them? Why couldn't I just DNF? Um, so, <laughs> alright, so three to go. The Dark Light by Julia Bell and Awake by Natasha Preston work really well together. So we'll talk about those at the same time. The best way to describe them is bad cult books. So in The Dark Light, there's a girl who burns down someone's house. Um, this isn't explored, by the way. This is mentioned briefly in the first chapter. You follow her burning down someone's house. And then her foster parents are like, mm, we need to get rid of you. You're causing trouble. By burning down someone's house. We don't know why she burnt down the house. We don't know what happened to the person who was in the house. We just know that the house got burnt down and then she got sent to this bloody island to be in this cult. Like, that's the story I want to know. Um, but in this cult, there's a girl who is very much um, indoctrinated to their regime. And the new girl comes to the island and then they fall in love. And then bury your gaze happens, which is my least favourite trope in the entire world. Um, but it's a case of like the development in their relationship is just so feeble. It's like, we've just met. I'm interested in you. Like, you've been indoctrinated your entire life. You're like 14, 15. You've never lived anywhere but this cult. You've never had anything but these religious beliefs. Sophia's coming to help me. Sophia's coming to nick the rest of my cheese. How, how rude. <laughs> how rude. But yeah, she um she has these religious beliefs. I can't believe that just happened. She's nicked my cheese. Um, thief. But yeah, she has these religious beliefs uh, her whole life. And as soon as this girl comes to the island, she's just like, hey, you, I'll abandon my religion for you. I'm interested. I'm a horny teen. I'm a horny teen. Nothing beats horny teens. Nothing beats horny teens. Um, but yeah, it, it's not realistic and I didn't appreciate it. And in a similar vein, a week. Um, so there's a boy who is indoctrinated, who has been with this cult for his whole life and he is sent to get this girl who has been kidnapped from the cult when she was younger. Um, she can't remember anything before the age of four. Well, that's number one with my problems with it because not many people can remember things from before they were four. So the fact that she like can't remember anything from before she was four doesn't seem that sus to me. Um, and then you've got the fact that this guy is pretending that like, he's he's not pretending. He like falls in love with her, but um, he decides he's gonna like take her back to the cult. And he takes her back, and bad things, you know, cult culty things happen. Um, but like. The first half of the story is just him like getting her back to the cult and then everything is slam jammed into the second half and it feels like it could have been better if it had been, like if the beginning had been rushed a bit more and then the actual like bit at the cult had been developed properly and then there'd been more of like the fallout because like this is going to be a spoiler but like she forgives him. Oh Sophia's come back for more cheese. I haven't got any more cheese. High five. Do you want to help me? Yeah you can help me. Alright cool. But yes, yeah, so um, yeah, yeah, she forgives yeah. him and like stays in a relationship with him despite the fact that he's lied to her. He's like pretended. Oh, she doesn't want to help. Um, he's lied to her and he has like. <laughs> what do you want? Wow. You want more cheese? I don't have any more cheese. I'm so sorry. Do you want a cuddle? Nah, I'm gonna leave now. You don't have any more cheese. <laughs> oh, it's balloon time. Sorry, guys. Brief balloon is shaped interlude. Woo! Let's play balloons in the kitchen. But yes, um, <laughs> there's no point in trying to carry on. She has more balloons. Um, <laughs> thank you. Now I have a balloon. Oh, uh, no, the balloon must go in the kitchen. My cheese got taken, my balloon's been taken. It is a sad day. Um, but yeah, so basically she forgives him and is like, you know what, your parents forced you to do that. I still love you. He he literally kidnapped you and took you to a cult that were going to murder you. And you're like, it's fine though. Weird flex, but all right. Um, but it's just one of those things that like, her parents don't change their names. They don't change her name. They kidnap her from this cult and are like, we're going to hide, we're going to change our identities by not changing our names at all, and we're going to move across country every single time somebody from this cult always tracks us down without changing our names at all or our identities, really. None of it makes any sense. Sean's <laughs> like chasing Sophia into the kitchen. 
this is an exciting filming experience. Uh, but yeah, none of it makes any sense. So it's just one of those things and it doesn't make any sense. And I I should have DNF'd it again. I knew I was going to hate it and I should have DNF'd it. And I didn't. And I'm mad at myself. Um, and I even have to read another Natasha Preston book because I have another one of her books on NetGalley. Um, but I might end up actually DNFing that one because this one was not great. And the last book I'd like to talk about is The Legend of the Light Keeper by Kelly Hall, another one star, because that's the whole point of this video. Girl has a forbidden romance with the son of her soon-to-be stepfather. Not for me. Um, when you hear, like, forbidden romance, like, a girl's moving out to, like, the... But yeah, when you hear that a girl's moving to the outskirts of nowhere, um, and she's finding someone to have a forbidden romance with she thinks like oh is it gonna be like paranormal romance no it's just just her brother-in-law brother-in-law stepbrother step stepbrother it's just her stepbrother N not for me this also has what i've discovered is one of my least favorite tropes um which is that you didn't do anything wrong it was a mistake trope um i don't actually know if this is a trope i've just happened to read two books this year that have done it but the, the love interest, the brother, um, he killed someone in a car accident and the main character is like, but it's fine, it was a mistake. You didn't mean to drunk drive and kill someone. Like, that doesn't excuse it. That, that is not okay. And that is not a, the kind of moral you want to be putting in your book. Oh, is he gonna help me? Oh gosh, no, Ezra's helping me. You're getting all the vapors today. Hello. But yeah. So that is not the kind of moral you want to be putting in your book. It is not okay to kill someone while drunk driving, even if you don't mean to be drunk or driving. It, it's just not okay. Um, so even if it hadn't been for the forbidden brother romance in this one, which I did not appreciate, I would have hated this for that reason. Um, that would have been enough of a reason to give it one star. Um, and those are all of the one star books I've read this year. Um, and the DNFs, and the DNFs. I almost forgot about the DNFs. They felt like so long ago. It's like it's been hours. Um, it's like I've had to film this like six times because I was just almost dying or just talking about these bad books. Um, oh, I was just trying to give you my phones. Um, but yeah. So, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please don't hate me. But also, if you do, that is your decision. Please, please don't put them into the microphone. <laughs> but yes, it, uh, please don't hate me. But if you do, that is your choice. Um, if you disagree with my thoughts on any of these books, please let me know why in the comments. Like, what did you love about them? Is there something that I missed? One of the DNFs, should I give it another go? Does it get better later on? Um, I'm always willing to listen to other people's input and to listen to other people's recommendations. So if it is genuinely a case that, like, some of these authors are great but I've picked the wrong book from them, or if it's a case that the book is good but it's just, like, a slow starter and I haven't given it long enough, then please do let me know. Um, because I haven't unhauled any of them yet and I will be able to try them again until that point. Um, but yes, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you enjoy the next three days of Bookmas. Um, I can't believe there's only three days left, but you're going to get a TBR, you're going to get the books that we've skipped reading this year, and you're probably going to get some more sad babies because that just seems to be the entire aesthetic of our videos at this point it's daily, just sad children daily filming has uh daily filming is draining the children it's draining me it is putting strain on all of us i'm looking forward to january um but yes thank you for watching um see you tomorrow bye you you get to say bye as well oh hello would you like to say bye bye can you wave can you wave mr Estra? can you wave this is going to take longer than you think. Oh, Sophia's going to wave as well. Whole family's in on this one. Yeah, we're waving. We're all waving. Thank you for watching. Bye.